Hey guys, Chris here with the Good Old Gamer. So recently I did a GPC test comparing Pascal and Maxwell, uh, and we noticed that there really wasn't too much difference there, and that led to this particular video where we're going to be comparing cores, shader cores, versus clock speeds to see if there's any difference in the overall compute performance if at the exact same teraflops. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you in part by our patrons on Patreon. We are not a corporate sponsored YouTube channel. We are free to go ahead and deliver content that we see fit and we can go ahead and deliver the content as honestly as we possibly can with our own opinions. For as little as $1 a month, you can go ahead and help support the good old gamer and that helps us get tech on hands and do videos like this. To all of those out there that are current patrons, thank you for your support. So after that video where I had the GTX 950 and the GTX uh, 1050 Ti, with the same 768 shader cores clocked at the same clock speeds and we noticed no difference I was thinking what about teraflop for teraflop so I had a GTX uh, 970 on hand and I was able to get my hands on a GTX 1070 or 1060 rather and I was able to get both of these running at the same 4.8 teraflops and what sort of performance difference would we have there would a higher core count lead to a faster overall frame rates or does the higher core speed? So to me, this is pretty interesting because a lot of people think, oh, teraflops, doesn't matter how you get there, it all means the same thing. Now we're talking about virtually the same architecture, which I already proved that core for core and clock for clock will perform exactly the same. Just because it's teraflop for teraflop, that really doesn't mean jack. So let's go ahead and check out some of the specs here. All right, so to get these running at the same 4.8 teraflops, I had to take the 1664 shader core GTX 970 and clock that at 1443 megahertz. Now, I also wanted the RAM speed to be identical, so this way that there was no advantage. So by underclocking the GTX 970's RAM to 6 gigahertz with the 256-bit bus, that got us to 192 gigabytes per second total bandwidth. Now on the 1060, we have a lower shader count at 1280. Now technically, 1875 is the proper speed to get it to exactly 4.8 teraflops. Getting it to 1873 is the closest that the GPU would go. So we're talking very minuscule amounts of percents there. Um, now the GTX 1060 does have more memory, so we did limit all games to using 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM or less. Now, RAM speed, we're running at the full 8 gigahertz on the 1060, which still nets us the same 192 gigabytes per second because of the lower bitrate on the bus speed. And of course, because of the clock speeds, the teraflops between the two are identical. Now, for this testing, all benchmarks were run at 1440p. Now, we went ahead and kept everything at high, and if, you'll actually see the detail settings listed on each game. Now, I had to go ahead and do that to make sure that we didn't run over the 3.5 gigabytes available on the GTX 970. As we all know, technically there's four gigabytes there, but then that leads to performance issues. And to eliminate any sort of GPU throttling because of RAM, we went ahead and just decided to lower settings. That's why we're running them at 1440p, because at those resolutions, these GPUs are stressed to the max. No CPU bottlenecking was observed. Everything was running at 100% GPU load the entire time. As always, we're using our standard Ryzen test bench, but for all that information, please check the description below, and let's go check out some benchmarks.
Well, all right, guys, unlike the last video, GPC test part one, uh, where we saw no difference, in this one, we are seeing a difference. Uh, ironically enough, core speed is better than more cores. Now, this is something a lot of us kind of suspected because Pascal's uplift in performance was purely due to much, much higher clock speeds. Now, they did have higher core counts as well, but it does seem that going with a faster GPU, at least on Pascal or Maxwell, will net better results than just scaling up on shader cores. Now, this was not super unexpected, but there's a lot of people out there that don't understand this. Just because one thing's 4.8 teraflops and another one's 4.8 teraflops, even though technically, architecturally, they're identical, there's still going to be a difference. Now, if you're talking about two different architectures, there's going to be a wide range of difference. Uh, for example, there's been a couple of people thinking that Vega, and they're trying to gauge it basically just by teraflops. That is not the way that this works. That's why I wanted to do this video, because we are basically using the same architecture, and even in that particular condition, it still doesn't work out that way. So ignore teraflops when you're comparing GPUs, because at the end of the day, Clearly, that's not the best way to do it. Now, it will give you kind of a rough idea. We're only talking about a difference of 6% on the minimum, so 6% higher on the 1060, and then uh, only 3% higher on the average. Now, due to testing variation, I'd probably knock off a good solid percent and say between 2 and 5%. So there are definitely gains there, but we're not talking about anything massive. So it can give you a rough idea if you're comparing architecture to architecture. But if you're going to compare, like I said, like GCN or NCU, versus uh, Maxwell or Pascal or something like that. It's completely off the table. Now, I wanna be clear, these are just very academic tests. Uh, these are not ways to gauge real world performance, but these academic tests will allow us to kind of gauge in the future a uh, better idea of where things will land just by looking at clock speeds and teraflops. That's why I'm doing these GPC tests because these are tests that nobody else is really doing. And yes, they're academic at best, but they can lead to us as consumers being able to identify performance before like officially seeing them in benchmarks. So that can help you be a more informed consumer. And honestly, I personally find it interesting. So alrighty guys, if you like this kind of video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. And if you wanna help us out, please join us on Patreon. And thank you for your support. And I will catch you guys in the next video.